I have spent the last 24 hours scanning every bug bounty program that I have access to privately through HackerOne. By scanning, I just mean doing a vanilla subfinder scan, getting a list of all the subdomains, which was about 250,000 unique subdomains, and then scan them using Nucle, but just using Nucle templates that are available publicly on their repository just to make this video and make a couple of points and also share my experience doing a large scan across the entire internet with this much data or this much request actually because there's so much request that i ended up sending out that it kind of got me into hot waters which i'll just talk about in a little bit but let's talk about the logistics behind this as i mentioned earlier i use subfinder to just find every subdomain that exists so i just use some of my api keys that i have access to pull a list of all these subdomains within these domains and just put them in a single text file that i can later leverage using lima and then scanning them and distributing the workload through it on a vps if you're not familiar with lima go look at last week's video but unfortunately i do have to let you know that the lima repository has been turned private for personal reasons but there are a couple of forks out there that you can look for and who knows maybe at some point somebody else will make this tool or or maybe it will become available at some point that you can use as well but now let's talk about the experience with scanning Lima. But before we jump into the video quickly, let me just give you an update on the course. A lot of you guys are asking for codes. I don't have any more free codes to give away, but I do have a code that will let you sign up and purchase the code for $28 to celebrate our 28,000 students. So if you want to grab the course for $28, there's a link down below in the description or it's going to be pinned in the comment section. But before we do that, I want to quickly say I am sorry if you were one of the bug bounty programs on the receiving end of these requests because I am aware that I was sending maybe upwards of uh 24 ip addresses with i don't know how many even <laughs> templates at this point to scan the bug bounty programs i try to keep the request to a minimum but unfortunately when you scale a scan of that size things do sometimes get out of hand so if you were on the receiving end or if you got a notification because of your teams i want to start off by saying i am sorry for doing this but i did all of this in the name of research but now let's talk about the results the first thing that i want to say is if you are a bug bounty hunter that's especially new and you just think that Nucle is the way to make money, well, boy, I have some bad news for you because honestly, with scanning all these bug bounty programs, even though they were all wildcard domains, meaning everything under those domains were in scope, I scanned everything with Nucle templates that are out there in public. And honestly, I'm sorry to disappoint, but there are no vulnerabilities to be found and i didn't catch anything that was specifically vulnerable by just scanning these and i'm not saying any of this to discredit the tool or the amazing people that were behind it or even just talk negatively about the people that are contributing to the templates it's just to tell you that the market for automated vulnerabilities is extremely saturated and honestly nearly not worth it to do but there are some good things that did come out of this entire research that i did and even though it was a short span of time until i got this email right here from aws telling me to stop scanning i did get some really good takeaways out of it and to be very short if you want my advice to do something similar to this here's what i have to say don't don't do it it is not worth the headache it's not worth the scaling it's not worth the money but if you're doing it for research purposes like i am or you're trying to find this small niche that you want to research into and look into then this video is definitely for you and i highly recommend getting some sort of data similar to this to be able to do your research or whatever it is that you're doing so the entire scan went into four different phases the first phase is just getting the data post running sublister or whatever recon or asset discovery tool that you run then you have to create a stable environment and a batch of different files that you want to feed into your tools in order to get them scanned so if we're going after 250,000 subdomains i can just feed all that 250,000 subs to one asset or even to lima and have it scan it all so we have to actually do them in batches one to avoid timeouts with aws lambda and two we also don't want to just send all this data out at once in case something does go wrong then just have to sit there waiting for the scan to be done even though something has gone wrong the way to do this is you can do this to your terminal i'm going to show you my file i don't want to show the contents of it but this is what the content of the file looks like it's about 225,000 or 222,000 list of domains and we can just use something like split to have it actually split that up into files with batches of 10,000 domains. So once I run this command, it's going to make, I wanna say 22 files or whatever the number is in math, dividing the 222,000 by 10,000. And once we do our LS, you can see that it's gonna create all these random files and each of them are going to have 
about 10,000 lines per file. So if I run this right here, you can see it's 10,000 and I want to say something like the last one is probably a lot less because it's the end of the file that we have. Let me just run it really quickly. End of a file and you can see that one is only 2,000. And what I have done here is I've created a runner for it. So if I actually open this file, you can see that it's a runner. It's doing a loop, reading everything in LS, which is all these files right here. Obviously minus the all.txt that we get rid of. And then we say, hey, for I and LS, I want you to run this, for example, swagger.yaml. And I'm actually kind of signing all of my uh, different requests with a disclaimer header that says, hey, bug bounty hunting. So just this way they know it's not malicious and it's someone that's doing something with decent intent. So that's kind of what I did with this portion of it. And this was just the baseline of finding a way to be able to split all of these different files or different data into different batches and then feeding into Lima for the scan that you can see in there. So that was phase one. The point of that was get good data, batch them up, split them apart, be able to get our scan done. Now it's time to look at phase two, phase three, and phase four, which is just the start of our scans, starting with phase two, which was just getting data on exposures. And let me show you what I mean by that. This phase is mostly focused on finding panels that you can see on this screen, things like your global protect, uh, pulse secure, you can see there is the Django, Netscaler, WordPress, most of these are just in case a vulnerability drops, like a zero day drops, and then I wanna give them 30 days and then later on go scan for them. And now I have a really good list of them, but on top of that, I also have things like Grafana that I can manually pen test for, or I have AEM that could generate leads for me, or even just looking at things like Jenkins and all the way through WordPress. Those are the things that I'll probably grip for something like this, and just doing grip for example, WordPress, and then later digging into these and seeing if there's any vulnerable plugins and things that I want to look at as far as the exposed panels go. At this phase of my scan, I am still in the information gathering, but there is a touch of a little bit of recon, also lead generation that comes with this phase. Now let's look at phase two, which is looking at misconfigurations. And that one is also enjoyable because not only you get access to data about particular stack or particular applications, but it also gives you potential misconfigurations that could also turn into lead. So let's take a look at this data really quickly. I think this one is called final misc. And we're just going to cut for the first three fields, which hides the domains again. And if we look at him, this is a great place to look at. Obviously, some of these need to get cleaned up, like the TLS stuff I don't really care about. Some of this cash purges I don't care about. But if we look for uh, the good data, I'm actually going to grip V for this. Maybe something like on auth, grip V for uh, the TLS stuff. I'm just going to clean this up really quickly and look at it. And honestly, looking at this, the cool thing is to have leads that I want to look for. And honestly, things like GraphQL and Tomcat are a really, really good place for me to start. So if I was to just go and tackle this entire list of data that I have, I would probably ignore the things like AWS listing, the TLS stuff, front page, and just look at the things that I am very familiar with, which includes some of GraphQL and Tomcat, and then looking in depth at how to attack those specific targets. So that was phase three. And for our last phase, which is our vulnerability scan, and this is the one that I regret doing. And I don't recommend doing as well is looking for vulnerabilities and if i actually run this and do the same thing with our cut and just have it show the data for the scans i'm just gonna look for spaces and then later have it just put out the first three i'm actually gonna do a sort you so it also gives us no duplicates and you can see even though there's a lot of data these were the ones that it found some stuff came as high which i don't really think they're gonna be as high but you can see there is some like logs in there that you can dig into you can enumerate username and maybe use those username that you have enumerated for passwords to gain access to these data but honestly doing all these scans i didn't get a whole lot and the honestly the one thing that i did get was an abuse case from aws which is also not on me and not on nucle because of the data that i was sending so honestly if you're looking into this there are two things that i want you to take away from this entire video and number one that is for you to understand that you can run nucle templates to generate leads that is a great place for you to use this tool to find assets that are interesting so you're not just relying on asset discovery to find assets to hack on you can run something like this and really just niche down or two you can actually use this tool to find exposed panels and third-party tools that could be misconfigured and one of my favorite examples for that is using something like gitlab that could be misconfigured a lot of times and also in addition to all this i want to kind of test this out with a bug bounty program or actually a vdp i did scan nasa and we did find some interesting stuff but again none of those led to any vulnerabilities 
outside of the leads that I found through my phase two and phase three of my scans, which was super, super cool to see. All right, that's it. This was kind of a short video and kind of like what the state of automation and scanning is in bug bounties. But if you do want to see me do something similar to this with all the public programs on HackerOne, drop me a comment with the word public. Maybe I'll scan all the bug bounty programs that are out there that are public and then share the data from phase two and phase three and just ignore the vulnerability part and share it with you all on GitHub. All right, that's it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, like the video and drop me a comment and I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.